Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com and this is one of a series of videos on taking a backup of your ancestry family tree. You may know that you can export what's known as a getcom file of your ancestry tree. So a getcom file includes the people in your file and their relationships. However, it does not include any media that you uploaded from your local machine. So any photographs of people, of headstones, any documents, any scans of newspapers, that isn't included in the ancestry export of your tree. So we're looking at ways of exporting the media as well. And this is a review and walkthrough of a free Chrome extension called the Ancestry Media Download by the developer Jareem Gunther, which is built to export the photos and stories from your tree. So I'm going to add it to Chrome, agree to this, add extension. Now in order to see it, I'm just going to go into my extensions and I'm going to pin it. And this is it, this, this download. If you read the instructions, well, first of all, it's, it's telling you that it doesn't work on a Mac. Okay. And the only prerequisite that it advises is that you should clear all files out of your default downloads folder. So when you run the extension, it doesn't prompt you for which folder you would like to download the files to. It uses the browser downloads folder and as everything goes in there it could be full of a whole lot of items so I'm in a tree here now this is a tree I set up for de demo purposes so I'm gonna go to the media gal gallery and here where I see all media you don't even run it from here either if I click on this download here and it's telling me that navigate to your media gallery and then click on the photos or stories tab what that means is that if you have both photos and stories, you're going to do this download once for your photos and then you're going to navigate to the stories tab and then you're going to run the download for the stories. So I'm going to click on into my photos tab and I only have two and I'm going to run the download. So I just clicked on the extension and now I click on download media. And just watch the bottom here and notice how a file has suddenly appeared. And if I navigate to Windows Explorer, you notice that I actually have three files. There is my photo underscore smith dot jpeg. There is my image underscore zero zero five dot jpeg. Then I have this third file, which is a meta file. And by meta, it just it's going to be giving me descriptive information about these two files. And notice how it's called underscore page one, photos underscore page one. That is because if I had more than 24 images, this its display starts to paginate. So I would have a page one, I'd have a page two and a page three and so on and so forth. But I only have two images, so I only have a page one. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this page one meta file just to see what extra information it gives me. If I double click it, it's a CSV file. For me, it's gonna open in um, Microsoft Excel. Okay, it's telling me I have two, that there was two files, that's correct. And it's giving me the name of the file and the type, and that is also correct. And then it's giving me a URL, but notice what it doesn't give me. It doesn't give me any information of person profile to whom the file was attached to or associated with. And what happens if I go to this URL? This is an ancestry URL. I'm just going to control C this, copy it. I'm going to open up a tab, control V, Hit enter. And what this is, this is the actual image, it's some kind of crowd scene. So what this is, it's the location where Ancestry is storing the image that I uploaded. But that in itself doesn't tell me or give me any information as to who this particular image is associated with. Having said that, it has done what it said it would do. There was two images and it downloaded them both. So let's try the stories. So that's a Word document, that's a PDF, and that's an, the third one is an inline story. Okay, so let's see how it gets on. So once again, I'm on, I'm on the tab, correct tab, it's opened. And notice how this display is telling me right there who these stories are associated with or attached to. But if I click on download, download media, and then I'm just going to watch for signs of activity down the bottom. Yep, there's the files are starting to come down. So what it has done is it's brought me down these 
four files. The external story, open that in Word, no problems there. And then this was the inline story. This is the inline story that I typed in via the Ancestry editor. And what it is, it's, it's a HTML page. And if you open the HTML page, it's, I'm just opening this locally now on my local computer. I'm not sure how useful that is. I think if I was going to be a continuing user of stories, I would make sure that they were uploaded as external media. I would particularly want to have them as HTML files. Right. And this is the metadata. And once again, it's giving me the name. It's giving me the type. That's all correct. And then it's giving me the URL. So what I want to point out here straight up is, once again, you have no, seemingly you have no link to the associated person. So I'm going to do a bigger tree with a lot of photos. And I don't want to have them all mixed up with this one because, again, <laughs> it <laughs> it hasn't even prefixed the tree. If you were to run a second tree now, it would just plop a hundred images into this folder. And other than going by date, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't know which tree, which photographs were from which tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give myself a, a new folder. And I'm going to say this is a small tree. And I'm just going to pull all those into that subfolder, subfolder. And now I'm going to show you how this works with a bigger tree with a lot more media. So if I go to a particular tree, and I'm just going to go to the media gallery. What I have in terms of all media, mostly I, I have three pages worth of images. So what this tool actually does, how does it deal with that? I mean, it, it actually deals with it very nicely. If I click on the download, I click on download media, what's going to happen is there's a new meta file. Here are the images one by one, and because it's preserving the names of the files, I do follow my own naming convention. I tend to start with the year of the event, and then I have the name of the person. But I haven't always been ruthlessly um, adherent to it. So, for example, I have a, an image here which I've named, the file name is McElroy Arrest. Well, I, to be honest, I can't remember who that which McElroy that is and so I'm just going to let this continue because I want to show you what happens when it gets to the 24th record it's the last one okay that was a no intervention of mine it clicked on the next button the tool itself the Chrome extension clicked on the next page button and it just keeps going so I'll just let that continue on to the end so the tool is finished and here is my downloads folder and as you can see, there's a lot more files than there had been from the first demo run. You can also see that, by and large, I do keep to my own naming convention, but sometimes I don't. So here's a file that I uploaded, and I called it Mulvaney Grave. Uh, no particular name and no date. If you've uploaded files where you haven't even got these kind of details, so you've got image underscore 001, image underscore 002, this isn't going to be so useful for you. So just to go back to the extensions homepage, I'm just going to look at the support page. And way back when, this is an old complaint, but the developer is saying to go to his own blog page and put comments there if you need support. Okay, so I've got it open here, and in July 2020, one particular commenter said, My question is, with so much media attached to so many people, and all those file names not starting with the person's name, what is the method of sorting through it all after it's downloaded? It's then just a giant pile of work with no real way to get things associated with the correct people again. Maybe I missed something along the way. The developer replies and says, No, you've understood it completely there isn't any extra button that you need to click for more magic and what he's saying is that the app is more of an emergency solution so it is grabbing all your files just pulling them all down into the download folder with the original file names that you assigned now he does say that the csv files make it possible to do the connection but not easy and i was looking at it thinking well that, that's not actually the case it's not possible at all so here's my meta file for the big tree and yeah, it's just got names, type, and the URL. And the URL is just going to um, the particular images. If we see the McElroy rest, we'll 
because I didn't put any other details into the file name, well, which McElroy and when. How can I really figure it out without actually doing searching my tree for McElroy? There is one exception, though, where he is correct. And it's rather an obscure exception, but I kind of discovered it by chance. And that is with a particular type of story. If we go into the small tree and the stories file. So this is the meta file for the stories. If you click on the URL for the PDF or the Word document, which I'm going to do, Control C, and I'm now just going to open a new browser tab, and I'm going to click on, click enter. What that did is it simply downloaded it to my computer again. Right, so what you've got is a link to the Word document hosted by Ancestry, and it simply downloaded the document. So, and again, no information as to which particular person it's associated with. The exception is this rather, possibly not obscure, maybe lots of people are using it, but with um, an inline story. With an inline story, when you go to add a story, you can have the option of using Ancestry's editor on the in the browser page to type in the story. And that saves as a HTML file. But if you go to the link, Control c for this particular URL, and this actually brings me to the inline story page. That's what I typed in. Notice how this page does tell me that it's connected in this tree to this particular person profile. That is the only exception though, that is the only connection that you can make. As far as I'm aware, most people I think upload photos of images of documents. I can't see any way of tying those back to the person without following a naming convention as you save the files to your local computer before you upload them into Ancestry. So I'm just going to show one more problem. So in my sample tree, I have got this photo here. I did not upload this photo from my local computer to my ancestry tree. What I did was that I saw it in a public tree and I saved the photo from another ancestry tree into my tree. And I did it the right way. I've got a video on how to do this the right way and not to do it the wrong way. The right way keeps the attribution, it keeps the citation to the original tree and the original person uploaded the photograph. The problem is I'm now going to run the download again which will include this particular image. Into the media gallery, into photos, this particular file here, image 005, which we saw before, I named that and uploaded it. But this is the latest photo that I had copied into my tree from another ancestry tree. I didn't upload that photo. I didn't name that photo photo.jpg, right? I don't have control over that. Aside from that, I still think this is a good tool. And what the developer is saying is he's saying this is an emergency backup. Like if you have no other way of knowing that you have a backup of your media, this gives you your backup. And if all your files are image one, image two, image three, image four, well, so be it. It's for an emergency. Is it the only option? No. Is it the only free option? I'm not sure. But there's at least one other tool that I want to check out that has a free version that may give you a backup. And I want to check that out and I want to see how it deals with the association of the particular piece of media with a particular person profile. So subscribe if you want to see how I get on with um, the next tool that I look into. I'm also working on a roundup review of all the tools and software available to download your media, take a backup of your full Ancestry tree. It'll be on the Data Mining DNA blog when it's completed, so I've put a link in the description below to where you'll be able to get that article when it's completed.